Hey everybody, you're listening to the Songwriters Across Texas podcast, where we get to know musicians through their stories and we get to hear some of their music. I'm your host, Carl Anderson, and today we're shooting at Arlen Studios in Austin, Texas, and my guest is Paige DeShawsey. <laughs> Paige DeShawsey started life in Morris, Illinois, a suburb in South Chicago. She began singing with her mom at the age of four years old and never stopped. At 21, she competed on American Idol. It was there that she realized that she wanted to write her own songs. Paige met Nick James in 2011 in Chicago, and the two hit it off and joined forces and developed their blues roots band, Paige and the Reverend Few. They moved to Austin in 2013, restarted the band, and started gigging and gigging, gaining fans and building an arsenal music. In 2020, on April Fool's Day, early in the pandemic, they released their first record. They got a new song coming out in July now, and they're going to be touring the Midwest, going back to the old stomping grounds. I'm going to welcome to the show Paige Saucy to <laughs> I'm never going to unhear that. <laughs> I love it. That was my nickname in high school. I like it. And I forget mm-hmm. it sometimes, and Nick always Nick, reminds me. Nick reminded us of the nickname. <laughs> Let's. Nick is here with her. They're going to start us off with a song. Yes. What's, what's the song called? This is the title track to our record. It's called Ain't No Place to Be. All right. The 
This ain't a long place to be. This ain't a long place to be. Thanks, man. Thanks. It's so nice to sing in this room. Isn't it? It's, I'm always so happy to hear it because I'm and I get the cans on, you know, yeah. and I hear and it's so and I'm like, oh. it's such a warm room. There's rugs everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And you guys, that was really nice. It's great for the, the really nice for this room. Thanks. Yeah, you yeah. guys should be recording in here more often. That would be awesome. That's the goal. Yeah. That, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, thanks a lot for being here, and uh, we've got Paige and Nick, and y'all are a couple. We are. Yeah, yeah. we're engaged. We yeah. yeah, couple of kooks. We're doing the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look, Paige, let's get into your story. Uh, sure. th like your the old humble beginnings, as it the were. The humble beginnings. The old humble beginnings. <laughs> what was it like to be young Paige in uh, in in what Morris? A good old Grundy County, Morris, Illinois. Mm, Morris, oh, man. Illinois. Um, you know, it was a cute, like a quaint, tiny town, farms and, you know, cattle uh -huh. and things like that. I grew up on a, on a dead end street awesome. and, uh, my mom was a singer and my dad was a mechanic welder and very blue collar, um, very kind of simple folk, I guess, you know? Uh -huh. And, uh, I, I liked it, but I was always... I was always looking at my two-story window, like, how do I get out of here? Sure, and, and you're close to Chicago. Would, would your mom? Oh yeah. When your mom was gigging in Chicago? Mm, not in Chicago, like surrounding areas. So I, I was, I'm probably a good hour twenty southwest of Chicago. All right. So it's a healthy drive. Right. It's pretty disconnected from the city. I mean, I know people in my hometown that have never been to Chicago. I believe that. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of wild. I don't yeah. have the desire to go. So. I grew up in a small town in Connecticut that was also, I uh, grew up at the end of a dead end. So you like did? It was oh, that. nice. But, and there are people there that haven't left too. And, I, and I'm like, hey, you know, I, I can't imagine that life, but. There's a lot of people that do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If we didn't get out, we wouldn't be here, you know? Right. But so. so, but you wanted, you were already looking out the window at pretty young age. Yeah. So I looked at my two-story window and I looked at landfills and I always pretended they were mountains. And I was like, I'm going to get over those. <laughs> <laughs> That's I grew up near a railroad and a landfill, so. <laughs> How did music come to you? So, Besides your mom? Yeah, my mom sang. People always go, oh, when did you know you wanted to be a singer? Well, I just sang. I just, my mom sang in our back room, and I sang with her from the age of four on up. And she was a huge inspiration and got me into singing lessons as a kid and, uh -huh. and sang in that studio for, gosh, until I was 18. Uh-huh. And then started my own gigs, you know. Uh-huh. Right on. Did you... uh pick up any instruments? I had my mom's guitar, which I still have. Um, I took a couple guitar lessons, but I mostly just sang. Mm -hmm. And because my mom was just a singer, I wasn't around musicians. So it wasn't until later in college that I got to be in a band. Right. You know, right. She, she taught you a lot of songs. Were, were they uh, different oh, yeah. genres? Uh... <laughs> mostly country, mostly every Patsy Klein song you could think of. Okay. Uh, Dolly Parton, Tanya Tucker, the Judds. Nice. Oh man, the Judds were huge in my house. And, and my dad, he loved Motown okay. and my grandparents loved Ray Charles. They loved gospel music. So. Oh, right on. Yeah. So I had a really good, That's a great, you know, healthy dose. What did you have out of curiosity for your for your musical? <laughs> oh, in the early days, it was like a lot of fifties rock and roll. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had a lot of the like cassettes, like the fifties hits cassettes. Um, and then uh, my dad was really into like Deep Purple and nice. uh, and Grand Funk Railroad and yeah. that sort of stuff, and kind of grew into sort of bluesy stuff after that, but. Be a lot of Beatles. I'm listening to a lot of Beatles. Both of our up. dads really like CCR. CCR was huge. <laughs> was huge. huge you guys, the band. But yeah, it's for oh, sure. Yeah. I love CCR. I'm, yeah. Like, yeah, I'm into what your dad's probably. <laughs> almost, but uh, <laughs> between the two of you, you've got it all covered. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Feels like it. Yeah. So, and John Prine, too. Sorry. John Prine. Can't forget that. We can't leave Johnny P out. Man, yeah. God bless John Prine. God bless John Prine. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you got to college and it started, it, is that when it start? you started going, I'm going to try to put a, together a band? Yeah, I think that's when I got more band oriented. Probably the end of high school, it started. And then I went to um, 
I went to a junior college for music and mm -hmm. and finally learned how to read music and found middle C on a piano. It was the first time I started playing any kind of instrument. Uh, cool. So I was like, I felt like I was in grade school, but I was in college. I couldn't get accepted anywhere because I couldn't read music. Okay. So they were like, you can sing, but you can't play. So we can't, we can't Ooh. take you. That's crazy. It was really wild, but I saved a lot of money, you know, in debt. So there you go. But yeah, it was college that I got to play with blues bands right. um, in the Chicago area. So that was oh, really, wow. I had great mentors, really great mentors. Tell me so, about that. Uh, well, so I was 17 and I was singing at Buddy Guys and yeah, wow. got stuck in the back, had a fake ID. <laughs> nice. And I uh, got to go to these Rockabilly shows in Chicago and uh, it was awesome. And my mentors are still my mentors. So that's incredible. Yeah, it was, it was buddy guy. Um, yeah. He always just sits at the end of the bar. gets kind of drunk, you know, <laughs> did you have any conversations with the man? No, no, no. I only saw him. Josh Stone came in one time when I was playing and, uh, that was cool. I bet they'd all like you a lot. Yeah. She was super nice. She wanted to buy a CD. Awesome. I was like, buy a CD. You can just take one. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> can you sign one for me yeah. on my own? <laughs> Uh, how was the experience in college and uh, junior college and then getting into these clubs? Uh, how did it grow? Um, I mean, so I was, it was interesting because I was playing gigs with my professors in bands with them while I was you know, learning how to find middle C on a piano and learn how to sight sing, which nobody, nobody's thinking needs. I mean, come on. I don't use it to this day. <laughs> I know how to play chords so I can warm my voice up. That's cool. But yeah. um, it was great because I got to connect with a lot of people and, and, I, I think I saw my work ethic in my school works. I thought, okay, if I can do this here in a, in a rudimentary way, I can take this to another level and, and then I can do my own thing. So it, it definitely helped. Um, but once I, I got to meet Nick and the, and the itch to put our band together, it was like, after that was like, that was a whole other thing. That was in, in Chicago, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you guys were, uh, young, uh, young, young kids. I mean, I guess no, we're in our twenties. How old were you? Not too young. I think I was, was like twenty-eight, maybe. Okay. Twenty-seven. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I forget how old we are sometimes. <laughs> she forgets how old I am. To you know. I told people like, last oh, year older, I was thirty-three, you know. but I'm definitely thirty-four. Oh, that's not too far off, though. I mean, that's you know, I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah, but we, we go through that every year. <laughs> like, yeah. Wait a minute, what is it again? <laughs> uh, but yeah, we were in our twenties when we met, so. Right on. Yeah. And you, you, Nick, you had your own band at the time? Yeah. yeah I, you know, I was living in Chicago, I was running the lesson program in this little guitar shop, which is where we first met. Mm. Um, we had a bunch of mutual friends, and I had a band uh, called Drive Train, like the funky, rocky blues thing. Nice. And, uh, and we just played around a bit, and I had put out records previous to that, but I was kind of hunkered down. And then when I met Paige, I was like, oh, I, I love teaching, but I should be playing. This is, this is where it's at. He's this like, is, I really like her. I should yeah. make music with her. <laughs> yeah. where, did yeah. you, where did you see her uh, first? Well, oh, yeah. we, uh, I was working at this guitar shop, and we were, I was allowed to like, have little rehearsals at the shop after the, after the shop closed. So uh, Paige had hit me up on Facebook, Facebook. or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Modern day relationship. <laughs> right. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had a mutual friend that, that was uh, that was the, another mentor. Another mentor that yeah. put, put us together, and so she came into the guitar shop and walked in the door and sat down. We jammed, and it just went beautifully. It just it just well, clicked. Let me just take a step backwards because okay. when I showed up, Nikki, he was he was putting stuff together. He was kind of frazzled. He's like, oh, I don't really listen to I songs. Like set up the store for the rehearsal yeah. and clean things up, and and I was like, well, he looks nice enough. Like this, this will be good. But he said he wasn't really prepared, so I thought, I don't know, how's this going to go? And uh, he <laughs> sits down. You were great. He sits down, and he, like, pulls out a slide, and then he pulls up a mic, and he starts singing all these harmonies, and he kind of blew my mind. Right. And I was like, oh, you're not just going to be my guitar player. A, you're going to be my new best friend, because we get to talking about records. Nice. You know? Nice. And, uh, but I was like, wow, he's, and he's so musical, not just right. guitar, and he plays all kinds of stuff. Right. So I was, I was taken back. And That's the hair sweet. doesn't, you know. The hair, hurt. man, yeah. So. Uh, the, the mane. <laughs> oh, boy. The mane. No, I'm always jealous of your curls. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I know you got onto uh, American Idol. And, uh, yeah. you know, we, we can talk about that 
for a minute, maybe, or like, I, I think, it, I mean, I, I don't, I know you don't even, I mean, it, I would never even pin that on you, but to define you at I, all. I like don't that. usually tell people about it, honestly. Right. I know, but it's, in, it's interesting. And I think we mm. were, we were mm. talking about it before, like, what is that, that produce or the qualities or like, what is, so like, tell me about your experience with that and, and how it made you, you know, actually focus more towards where you want it to be. <clears throat> so, um, I auditioned in Chicago. It was a huge cattle call. I made it through, I had to sing a couple of songs. And then a couple months later, I went back and I sang in front of Simon and, and those guys uh -huh. and made it through. And my family took a limousine up. It was a thing. All right. And then after you made it, um, you had to go to this like hotel room and like do all these scantrons and do like psych tests and all kinds of like background checks. Wow. It was kind of, it was intense. Yeah. So we were there all night and then I went to Hollywood in January. Mm -hmm. So they flew you out and I packed way too much stuff because I thought <laughs> I was going to be there a while. I had intentions, you know, uh -huh, uh -huh. and I got there and I made it through the second round. And I remember being in the line with one of the girls and singing and I thought if her and I are in the same row, because I felt good about it. I'm going to go through. Right. But I didn't. And I didn't take their plane ticket home either. I actually, it was during NAM, So mm -hmm. I stayed out there with my mentor, Mondo Cortez. And okay. I went to, um, I went to Hollywood and went to Anaheim and we went, we played these juke joints, the, the doll hut or something. We played with the guys from, um, the, the paladins. Nice. So I got to stay with Kid Ramos and yeah. cat, you know, just yeah. couch surf. And I basically was like, take your effing ticket and. I'm going home and I'm putting my own band together. And, yeah. But it was strange because they did a, they came to my hometown. They did a full story. They, I mean, it was a, it was a, a feature and it was about my asthma. I feel like such a dork, but I had a really bad asthma attack when I was 15 and almost died. Oh. And so they wanted to hear all about that. They wanted to pull on people's heartstrings. Right. You know? Of course. I was when like, you like, just pulled on mine when you said that. Yeah. <laughs> it was, a, you know, it was a moment in time. Um, yeah. so yes, yeah, so after that I was like, okay, i I kind of want to do my own thing and I don't really have any interest in fame or ever go into my local restaurant and people snickering and talking. I'm like, right. Hey, it's me. We're neighbors. Right. It was such a strange experience. Totally. I'm yeah. good for you. One, mean, of, one of the real ones. I love it. I made it out. Let's, uh, <laughs> Hey, you guys ready to do a second song? Yeah. Nikki, let's play, let's play, um, the, what do you, one of yours from the record. All right. I miss my home senorita. Sure. This is a song I wrote about uh, about a hurricane, and uh, we were talking about this song earlier. Yeah. And it was um, uh, it's, songs seem to evolve and gain new meaning as time goes on, and uh, and it's just kind of nice to to feel a song grow with you as you go along. So it's called "I Miss My Home, Senorita." <laughs> Take a breath, take a walk, take a raincoat if you go. When the wind came along, it took away my home and all I'd ever known. Took my roof, took my car, took my pictures of what I'd seen. Well, upstairs became down, and as I look around, see my clothes will never be clean. I miss my home, Senorita. My there's nothing but rubble there. And at the top of the stairs was a door to my room. Well, at least there's sunshine up there As the dark takes all the light Illumination will take the night Cause the power lights are crossing the street Says to me, was all the trouble as far as I can see. But I hope that there's hope at the end of my rope, or at least across. 
across the sea I miss my home Cinderella But there's nothing but rubble there And at the top of the stairs There's a door to my room Well at least there's sunshine up there the kite chill the darkness cool the light can give you power or take it away to build your mansion build a wall build a tower or watch it fall cause there's nothing That's stronger than what you can't see I miss my home, senorita But there's nothing but rubble there And at the top of the stairs There's a door to my room Well, at least there's sunshine up there song i love that song it's gorgeous man you guys yeah. are awesome i mean it's i just love your songwriting both of you excellent thank you Thanks. you go good together turns out you know it kind of works <laughs> it works yeah. out maybe we should stick it out eh yeah. <laughs> kids out of state again uh let's talk about austin and your uh mm-hmm. your arrival here and and how uh how unplanned it was oh boy well yeah yeah the whole thing <laughs> um yeah, where to start? Well, well, we we were doing well in Chicago, and we were playing cool shows, and we were, we were doing we got some momentum, had management interested, all that. Mm-hmm. Kind they just of sold stuff. out show at the House of Blues. And yeah, we weren't yeah, in the fun. headliner. We were double the, door played we, there. We, 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 wow. Yeah, we we were busted our butts to to do that House of Blues show. It was we like did one of like the final <laughs> shows we did before we moved, and then we moved to Texas and had started from zero. We're like hitting open mics, and we're going. Well, I've never played an open mic in my doing? life. I was terrified. Wow. wow. <laughs> but the reason that we moved to Texas is my dad got sick. He had, he had Lou Gehrig's disease, mm. and my whole family relocated to Dallas to uh, to to be near my sister and her kids and all that. And then so we all ended up moving to Texas. Right. And Paige was gracious enough when I was like, hey, I, I got to go. She was like, yeah. okay, when are we going? Nice. Um, I always wanted to move to Austin. The, but that, that was the extent of the planning, by the way. You're right. Like, yes, it was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I live with two artists. Yeah, that's how it goes, right? <laughs> I loaded up my, my Chevy Malibu and... I don't know if I've ever seen a car that packed down, but it was just like cracking the windows and like putting suitcases. And <laughs> yeah. We need this chapstick. We need this, yeah. you know, I need this nail polish. <laughs> I do know. I do know about yeah. all that. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that was exciting, but you know, we had to start from the ground up and sat on the floor of our apartment. And yeah, I mean, sometimes our car, our car wouldn't make it up 360 because it was overheating, and we thought, what are we gonna oh, do? Yeah. <laughs> I had that problem with the car on 360 myself. Maybe it's just 360. I, th- I, I thought it was. Maybe it's like a rite of passage to living in <laughs> yeah. Austin. I know? wanted to blame it on 360 for sure. I was like, my car doesn't seem <laughs> right? to do this on any other road. At least it did it like for us during winter time when everyone uh, decorates the Christmas trees. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I was like, oh, oh so I can we... sightsee while I'm here. Right, yeah. Take some pressure yeah. off. Yeah. Okay, well, that was <laughs> so, a load up. Yeah. So where did you start going to the open mics? 
Uh, B.D. Riley's down mm-hmm. on Sixth was one of them where right. we when we made some really great friends too. Like we did, we, yeah. We weren't we didn't know what to expect, and like there were a lot of great songwriters that roll through those, and a lot. And we realized there's a lot of people that move to town and go, I don't know what to do, and we hit these open yeah. mics, and yeah. it's a launching pad for a lot of people. Uh, it it definitely is, and I I want to talk a little bit more about that because that's something in Austin that's been really important, and that uh, and I know after the pandemic there's probably less of it going on right now, mm-hmm. although yeah. there and I. But although I know there is a scene, you know, like I know there's a lot of young players out there. I just saw Calder Allen last night. He was only 19. Oh, wow. uh, I've got a guy coming on tomorrow, Kane Alvarado, who's only 14. Wow. Like this kid wow. can play. Like, I mean, these guys are really good. And so there is a nice talent crop coming up. But I know when uh, I got here in 1995 with Casey Crowley that the – open mics were really important and there was a lot of talented people in there like Johnny Gowdy and yeah. Beaver oh, yeah. Nelson and yeah. like these you know Guy Forsyth who's going to come in here in a little bit nice. uh you know so who did you guys bump into oh Eric Betancourt was our very first yeah. friend he's a wonderful songwriter from Maine he needs to come on your show yeah, yeah. Great to yeah he does need to come on he's so good his songwriting is so great so we hit it off because we were talking about the Wood Brothers uh-huh. we all love the Wood Brothers uh who else did we meet well actually Ben and Andrea from Beat Root Revival, some yeah, of our best right, friends. Right. We did a house concert with them. Yeah, that was some random house concert. From an open mic thing. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean. And Andrea is, you guys are in the pack. and, and Yes. Uh, uh, I wanted to quickly talk about Nick Curran, who was a, a really great. Another mentor, yeah. Yeah, that you yeah, told that's, me. It's funny, knew. his name came up in our conversation. I was like, oh, yeah, huge mentor. I met him when I was a kid, really. Uh, back in Chicago, because my mentors there were friends, right? And turned me on to his music. And I remember, <laughs> this is so silly. Uh, my mentor Mondo Cortez had given me two CDs. He gave me Doyle Bramhall and Nick Curran, and I got them mixed up. And so when I showed up to the gig, I was like, "What's Doyle Bramhall doing here?" He goes, "That's Nick Curran. What are you talking about? <laughs> that guy's got more soul in his freaking thumb than anybody. Sounds like Little Richard. Looks like Billy Idol. You know? Right, right. He was great. Yeah, he and, was." Uh, yeah, he was. He was. Uh, he had a. He had the, it going on. He did. He introduced me to all kinds of music: Buck Owens, uh, Magic Sam, nice. uh, the Blasters, yeah, Johnny Burnett Trio. I mean, I learned a lot. He would every time I'd see him, he'd give me like a bag full of CDs. This you know? is, yeah, and this again, yeah. you get to Austin, and somebody that talented is is, is helping. Out. Yeah, he had just passed before we moved. Yeah, I like think. right before we moved. Yeah, he just passed. Right. Yeah. So timing yeah. was like, man. But his but his impact on you was already there, and, yeah. and Austin uh, opened its arms to you, and Absolutely. you guys fell in, and and uh, yeah, we felt loved from the get go. So yeah, that's it was really great. nice. And when, and now okay, now I can get to Kelly Green because you you told oh, me you yeah. met Kelly Green at a songwriters across <laughs> Texas, yeah, yeah. years ago, yeah, yeah years I, ago. I was playing with Jennifer B in the Groove, and yeah. uh, and you know sort of side manning it, and I was playing that with them a lot, and they did uh, an episode forever ago. And um, at the time, it was Texas KGB was yes. the other band, yes. so the, the Kelly Green Band. And so now her that, dad was in it. Her dad Uncle was in it. We're, oh, we're still with the dad was still. Oh in it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, oh, this, wow. we're talking like forever ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. Uh, wow. so, so it was neat. We met them. We all hit it off right away, and then didn't see each other for years. And really? we we're like, come back around. It was kind of the same with Ben and Andrea. We met them, hit it off, and then where there's the friendship was guaranteed. We just had to wait it out until yeah, we're everybody's kind of doing their thing. All in the same circle again. Although we didn't see um, Kelly and those guys for a while, but we would see them in passing, you know, be out. Right. I can't tell you how many drinks I've got people thinking I was Kelly Green. Oh, because yeah. Because we both had dark hair and hats on. And still, she, she actually goes, hey, it turned around the other day. I was out, and someone goes, oh, hey, let me get you a drink. Paige from the Reverend Hugh. She's like, nope, Kelly Green from Madam Raynard. <laughs> I was like, yes, Kelly. I've got so many drinks because of you. <laughs> That's great. You guys, I mean, keep, so keep them coming. Call right? me whatever you want. <laughs> I'll be her doppelganger any day, man. <sighs> well, you guys are in a band together that plays at the Saxon. Yeah. And uh, I've got to see it several times. It's always amazing, and I'm always amazed at the – not only the size of the crowd that comes out, but who's in the crowd. It's like, you know, like it's always like you, you see, you know, all the ba- the club owners are all in there hanging out. He's always yeah. there. He's so nice. I never actually look out and look at people. I have to tell you, I don't really look out 
and look at people when they're in the audience. So sometimes yeah. people will be there and go, you didn't see me? I go, I don't see anybody. I look above all of y'all's heads. Right. <laughs> Plus, it's hard to see beyond the too far it with oh, lights yeah. in your yeah. face. And we have a great crowd. I mean, it's amazing. We feel very lucky. You do have a great crowd, and, it, and you, you deserve it. I mean, it's Thank really, you. it's like the, the night moves very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how did how did the pack, how did you guys, you know, come together? It's It started very, just, you know, we... Got together, drank some wine, hanging out. Andrea's like, well, we could get a couple of us together. And me, her, and our friend, Amanda Darnell, we had done some things together. And Andrea and I had been singing a couple of songs. We did a, a Dolly Parton tribute show. And so this kind of combination of, like, getting some ladies together singing right. kind of started early on. Right. And then she was like, what about Kelly Green? What about Carrie Hudson? And yeah. uh, so it just, it formed. And it was really natural. It was never forced. And there were moments where, we, we you know, we had to sit down and, like, talk particulars. And then it just... I don't know. I've, I've never seen anything like it. That many women. Right. Like, and there's no ego at the table. No, there isn't. And it's that, really wild. And But you all had a band, your own bands going. So you went, yeah. Let's, this is just for fun. Just or, fun. Right. A place to sit and sing and hang out. Right. And yeah. and go and go to happy hour at sex and. and Drink Glenn Levitt. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and entertain a lot of people <laughs> and get paid. Yeah. You know, you got, I'm sure you it's, do okay. It's so much, it's low pressure because the rest of us in our own projects, we put so much pressure on ourselves that we're like, let's just have fun. And if we're not having fun here, we'll, we'll, we'll have that talk with each other. Like, let's get back to fun. So that's good. I think that's yeah. hard sometimes as when you're an artist for life and you're committed to it, you know, and yep. there's definitely times when it's not so fun. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We've you definitely know, to that. Yeah. And, and life, you know, needs you to do other things. You know, and you and your brain goes, it, it's, it, it feels funny about it because, yeah. you know, it's like I'm supposed to be doing this. But are you really, you know, are you really you're going to do the thing you're supposed to do? You're a lifelong artist, you know, just keep your art fresh. Yeah, it always calls you back in some way, you know. And what's cool, too, is we've extended the pack. So the guys sit in, Nick will play guitar, Cody will play drums. Nice. It's become a family, really. So that's part of what I, you know, Madam Radar has done our show and that they're, I immediately felt like I was one of them, like, yeah, you know, they and have that way. yeah. And then, uh, but that's the same with y'all. It's like, it is, it does feel very family like, totally. and, uh, I feel like you're one of us. I feel like you just, you, you get it. Like we were talking before we started and like, oh, he gets it. He knows. Yeah. I, know I do. I feel like I'm one of you too. Cause I am, I mean, yeah. I, it's like. We're we're artists, and we're we have uh, the idea is to make things with quality mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. substance, and that there's a standard. It can be silly, it can be a lot of different things, yeah. but it has to have a quality. You know that is sort of absolutely. I I call it like I I just want to. I want to make something that will go up on the DVD shelf next to Jack Nicholson movies <laughs> or whatever, you know, like sure. a record that would go next to a Pink Floyd record, you know, whatever it is that you just, I want to put something in the pile. Yeah. 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 And you like want to have something behind that. You want to have something's got to hurt sometimes to say it or something's got to really move you. It's got to be, it's got to be this profound sort of feeling where you go, I have to put this somewhere. Right. Otherwise I'm going to go crazy. That's, you know? that's true. And I, yeah, and life's going to make you, you know, I mean, if you're paying any attention at all, you're constantly going to be having something to write about. Oh yeah. yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You never run out of inspiration. Yeah. All right. requires emotional content as Bruce Lee put it. Emo just, it could be, it could be silly or Bruce Lee. Yeah. He said you need emotional content. Huh. Yeah. And, and I was just, I, that phrase has always stuck with me. That, I like that. Yeah. So like, and you, you could be whatever you are, but if you got it, you got to be in it. You got to be emotionally. That is a in good it. way of putting it because it's. All, I've, I've had this talk with a lot of people, and it's like you. It doesn't have. You know, it can be poppy. It can be. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. It can it's be absolutely. any damn thing, but it has to have what emotional content. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Emotional content. It's gotta be. You gotta really be there. You know. Absolutely. That Bruce yeah. Lee, he was onto something. Yeah. Bruce Lee, he was, you know, yeah, he might catch on too. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys got a uh you got a new song that you're gonna uh, you're gonna release and uh you you're going back to the Midwest and uh Hopefully in the fall, yeah. We're still trying to work some dates out. But that's we always we always make our a little uh It's like a little pilgrimage back home. Thank you, that was the word yeah. I was looking for. There it is. Yeah. Um, so it's been a while since we've been back. I to was play. gonna say, how long has it been back since you've been in back up to Chicago? Two years, probably since pre-pandemic. I was yeah. supposed to go next weekend to go for you a family were. reunion, and yeah, 
I just had a surprise. That's right. I you were. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did. Hey, um, yeah, we talked no, about that. Yeah. Yeah. Can I go in? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dang, cancel just, the party. Yeah, and then, you know, it's like it, it, some things mo- are getting moved around, so it's like, oh, I'm not going to get to go back, which is kind of a bummer, but. Yeah, but we'll, we'll get there. It'll we'll still there, be yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. It'll yeah. all be there. It'll Cord still fields, be there when you get yep. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. great. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming on so much. I, I Thank just, you for having us. Yeah, this is really fun. Do you have anything else you'd like to say to, uh, to anybody, <laughs> uh, so, you know, out there in the world? Hi, Dad. Yeah. Hi, Dad. My dad out there. He's He'll probably watch this, hopefully. Who else? <laughs> yeah. Hi, Mom. Yeah. So let's close out with one more. Uh, which what do we got next? Man, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're, we're gonna roll our, the dice here. We're gonna throw okay. ourselves in the deep end. We've never played this for public people at all. You're the and only it's not, one. And oh, it's man, not really. Yeah. We've got a couple songs in the works in the studio, but like this one's not close to being done yet in the studio. But we're we're kind of feeling it today. So oh, so let's take some chances. Yeah, I'm feeling, why not? Uh, I like good. it. I like it. Do you have a cheat sheet just in case? But I think I'm good. Can I? What, move what this are we calling this yeah. one? <laughs> the we, usual way. We're going to call it the usual way? Yes. All right. It's so no, fresh, they haven't even decided on the title. There's mul- this will be interesting at least, right? It's going to be great. The get together in the usual way. One who stumbles and the other stays. I can't even believe you've never. That's amazing. First time we thought, why not? Yeah. Why not play for Carl? I, I can't <laughs> even tell you. That touches me. Uh, you guys are great. Uh, hey, hey, if you guys have been watching this on the CW, by the way, and you want to watch the longer version, go to the Songwriters Across Texas YouTube channel and check it out. And uh, you can go to the Reverend Few.com, Facebook. Dot, dot com, yep. Facebook. Yeah. Thanks again, you guys. Thank you so much for having us. It's been so much fun. All right. Yeah.